สวัสดีค่ะ Experiment number seven on electrochemistry. The objectives are to construct galvanic cells and measure the E cell, and to construct electrolytic cell and identify chemical reaction that occurs on both electrodes. The electrochemistry uses redox reaction to produce electricity, or in the opposite way around, as you apply electricity to make the reaction occurs. Separate the reduction and oxidation reactions and the flows of electrons will produce electricity. And we can make a simple electrochemical cell by connection the two half cells together. And we have two types of electrochemical cells, the galvanic cells or the voltaic cells and electrolytic cells. The galvanic cell, we have spontaneous reaction that produce electricity. The opposite electrolytic cell, we need to use electricity to make a reaction occur. So the reaction in galvanic cell is a spontaneous reaction, where the reaction in the electrolytic cells is normally a non-spontaneous reaction. It will not occur by itself unless we apply electricity for it. The application of galvanic cell or voltaic cells are the batteries. We have different types of batteries, uh, different reaction that occur between the electrodes, anode, cathode. And the application of electrolytic cells are the coating of uh, some metal onto the object and the purification of metals. In studying electrochemistry, we need to understand the redox reaction. Redox reaction is the reaction that electrons are transferred. We have transferring of electrons between two substances. Redox reaction combines of reduction reaction. This is the reaction that substance receive electrons and the results of receiving electron the charge or oxidation number of that substance will be reduced another reaction is the oxidation reaction oxidation reaction is the reaction that substance lose electron and the result of losing electron is that a substance will have a charge increase or oxidation number increase. Example of redox reaction here on this slide. Zinc react with copper sulfate that produce zinc sulfate and copper solid. Let's see what is the reduction reaction. The reduction reaction is shown here on this slide. Copper ion receive electron and make copper. Reduction reaction receiving of electron. And the result of this receiving electron, the charge or oxidation number decrease. Plus two of copper here reduced or decreased into copper with oxidation number zero. Where the oxidation reaction here is zinc losing electron and produce zinc two ion. Zinc zero losing electron and the charge increase to be plus two oxidation number. Again, reduction, copper ion, receive electron, reduce charge from plus two into zero, where the zinc 
lose electron in oxidation reaction and the charge increase from zero into plus two. The galvanic cell use redox reaction to produce electricity. We can construct a simple galvanic cell like this in the picture here. This is the example of connection between zinc half cell and copper half cell. Zinc metal will emerge into a solution that has zinc ion. Copper electrode will be immersed into a solution that has copper to ion. And these two half cells are connected together with the saw bridge. Without saw bridge, we will not make a complete um, cell. And electron would be transferred between two half cells by this external wire. And we can measure the E cell using the voltmeter. The reaction that occur on the anode side is the oxidation reaction. And on this particular connection, the zinc half cell will be the oxidation reaction where zinc lose electron and produce zinc ion. Zinc would be the reducing agent. On the reduction side, Copper ion receive electron and produce copper. Copper ion is the oxidation, sorry, oxidizing agent. And oxidation, oxidation occur at anode. Reduction occur at cathode. Instead of having to draw how to connect the galvanic cell, we can use what is called the cell notation or cell diagram to represent how we connect the anode and cathode half cells together like this one. We know that oxidation is the zinc losing electron and reduction is that copper ion receive electron. So the cell diagram or cell notation is represent like this one. We have to always start with the anode on the left side and then cathode on the right side and represent how the reaction occur like this. The zinc is losing electron and then produce zinc ion just like this one in oxidation and connect to copper ion that is receiving electron and produce copper so the reaction just represent what we shown on the oxidation and reduction here we use the single vertical lines to represent the phase separation between the solid and the uh, solution in aqueous form here. This is also one single vertical line to show the phase separation between solution and solid phase. In the middle here, we use double vertical lines to represent the saw bridge so that this is one half cell connect to another half cell by this saw bridge. And we can calculate the cell potential or E cell of the reaction using the Nunn's equation that is shown by this equation. E cell or the cell potential of any galvanic cell is equal to the E cell zero minus 0.0592 divided by n log q, where the q is the reaction quotient. You have to know the redox reaction, and this is exactly the same as the q that we learned from the equi equilibrium chapter. n represent the number of electrons that are transferred between uh, cathode and anode. 
E cell zero is calculated from the standard electrode reduction potential of the cathode minus the anode. We get this standard electrode reduction potential from table 7.1. So if you know the Q, which in this particular one, Q is the ratio of concentration of product, which means concentration of zinc ion, divided by concentration of reactant, which means the concentration of copper ion. You know, N in this particular one going to be 2 electrons, so N is equal to 2. We can then calculate E cell of this reaction. So the value of E cell of any galvanic cell here that we measure by the voltmeter depends on the reductant potentials of the anode and cathode. So if you change the anode or the cathode half cell, the E cell that you get, the value that you got from the voltmeter will be different. And we're going to find out from the experiment. In this experiment, we're going to also see the electrochemical cell, another type that is electrolytic cell. In this electrolytic cell is the opposite of the galvanic cell where we're going to have to apply electricity to produce a non-spontaneous reaction. So for example, the reaction here, zinc ion and copper react to give zinc and copper ion. This will never occur by itself unless we put this connect to something uh, that give the electricity. As in this picture is the power supply. Connect the copper half cell to the positive connect the zinc half cell to the negative, apply the electricity, the reaction will occur like this. Now the copper half cell will be the anode that give electron to the cathode side of the zinc half cell. So copper is actually uh, giving electron uh, go through the oxidation reaction giving electron and become copper ion, giving electron to zinc to ion, receiving electron and get the zinc product. So let's see the experimental procedures. This experiment divide into two parts. Part number one is the construction of galvanic cells. In this experiment, you're gonna have to construct two cells. Number one, Daniel cell. Number two, uh, con connect between the lead half cell and the copper half cells together. Part two, you're gonna see the construct of the electrolytic cells and apply electricity to see the electrolysis of potassium iodide solution. Part 1, Governic Cells and Construct Daniel Cells. Daniel Cell is the connection between copper and zinc half cells. So the materials that you need are solution of copper sulfate, solution of zinc nitrate, the zinc metal as electrode, and copper metal as electrode. As shown in these pictures here, the metal need to be clean before used in the experiment. So you're gonna need to clean it like this. Use the sandpaper, clean on both sides of the metal. 
and uh, wipe it off the dirt of by tissue paper and it will be ready to be used and we're gonna also prove that we need to use the saw bridge to connect the two half cells. Saw bridge is anything that contain um, saw solution. Saw solution is the solution of ionic compound that has cation and an ion. And these ions will transfer to the half cell to actually balance the charge to give the electrochemical cell neutral on charge. And uh, we're going to prove that the solution can be anything that will not get involved in the redox reaction. So here in this experiment, we're going to use ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate, and potassium chloride. In order to connect the two half cell and get the measurement of the E cell, we will use the multimeter that has the connection here. The positive is using the red wire, the negative point using the black wire. And you're going to need to use wires with alligator clips to uh, hold on to the electrode metal. And we use the filter paper as saw bridge. This filter paper is going to be immersed into the saw solution. So this is how you do the experiment. Construct the half cell of copper and connect it to the positive side of voltmeter. Construct the half cell of zinc and connect it to the negative side of the voltmeter. And without saw bridge, we get the volt as zero. See again. Connect the red wire to copper positive side, the black wire to zinc negative side. See, without saw bridge, you get zero volt. Record this onto your report. Now we're going to connect the two half cells with saw bridge and see if we can get the fold or E cell now. We're going to use three different solutions as saw bridge solution. Ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate, and potassium chloride. See if we can get the same value of E cells or not. See one by one. Let's start. For the ammonium nitrate, use the strip of filter paper as the saw bridge. Connect the two half cells together and put the electrode in. The electrode is already connected to the multimeter and here you can get the volt. Record this value onto your report. Move on to the second solution, potassium nitrate. With the new strip of filter paper, connect the two half cell. Make sure that you get the filter paper inside the liquid. Connect the electrode and you will get the volt from the multimeter. Record this value onto your report. The last one, the potassium chloride solution. Use the new filter paper strip dip into the salt solution. Connect the two half cells. Always connect the zinc 
with the black wire the negative side, the copper to the red positive side, and you will get the fold value like this. And record this value. Now that you get all the experimental values, you're going to need to compare this with the calculated values using the standard potential from table 7.1. You would calculate the e cell using the Nunn's equation as introduction. e cell of any galvanic cell calculate from e cell 0 minus this value. You need to know the Q, you need to know the N, and you get the E cell 0 from the standard electrode reduction potential from table 7.1 from the lab manual. Naka. So the reaction is zinc with copper ion, produce zinc ion and copper. Q on this reaction is the ratio of Concentration of product, this one is concentration of zinc ion, divided by concentration of reactant, this one is concentration of copper ion. And we use the concentration the same in this experiment, which is 0.5 molar and 0.5 molar. So this ratio Q is 1. What is the N? N is number of electrons transfer between zinc half cell and copper half cell. And we know from the oxidation and reduction reactions that the electrons that are transferred equal to two electrons. So N is two. However, because the Q is one here, so log one makes zero which means this term, the whole term here is zero. That means E cell of this galvanic cell is equal to E cell zero. So if we can get E cell zero, we know the value of E cell. What is the E cell zero? So we're gonna need to get the standard electrode reduction potential from the table 7.1 and we get four copper half cell and zinc half cell like this. The, as you see here, this is the standard reduction potential. So it shows that the reduction reaction for copper ion and reduction reaction for zinc ion, the positive value means this half cell would like to receive electron much more than the zinc half cell. Zinc ion receive electron has the potential of negative 0.76 volt, which means that it doesn't really want to receive electron. It would like to do the opposite, which means the zinc losing electron the opposite of this reaction make oxidation reaction and the potential of oxidation would be positive 0.76 volt. So compare this to half cell. The copper ion would rather receive electron and zinc would rather losing electron. So the copper would be the cathode and zinc would be the anode. Using this relationship, we take the value from the table straight away, put into your, the calculation and we get this. So E cell is equal to E cell zero, which means E of the cathode 0 0.34 volt minus E of the anode, negative 0 0.76 volt. Put this into the calculation and you get E cell of this galvanic cell equal to 
1.10 volt. This is slightly hard, higher than what we've got from the experiment. Continue to the next governing cells. This time we're gonna connect the lead half cell to the copper half cell. So we will need solution of copper ion. We use copper sulfate 0.5 molar. We need solution of lead 2 ion. We use lead 2 nitrate 0.5 molar. And of course, we need copper metal and lead metal. And the same thing, you need to clean the metal strip before use. And we will do the same thing. We connect half cell copper to the positive side of voltmeter, which is in red. We connect the lead half cell to the negative side of voltmeter, which is in black. And we need the lead electrode, copper electrode, copper sulfate solution, lead to nitrate solution. And we can start the experiment without saw bridge. Without saw bridge, you get no fault. Record this to your report. And then we're gonna connect half cells with saw bridge using the three solutions as in 1.1. Start with ammonium nitrate and then potassium nitrate and then potassium chloride. Let's see the value one by one. And this is the value. Record this in your report, Nakha. Move on to potassium nitrate as solvent solution. And this is the value. The last one, potassium chloride solution as solvent solution. And here is the value. Same thing, compare the experimental values with the calculated value using the standard potential.